I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. Speech time! This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Well said, yes, Commander. Sir. Well said. Back on the Normandy, after what feels like ages. And... Before we get underway, let's explore the Normandy a bit and take the chance to get to know some of its crew, who after all are now our crew, now that the captain has stepped down. Of course there's more stuff we can look at for Codex info and XP. Let's talk to Joker. Let's find out a bit about him. Commander, something you need? After all, we'll be entrusting him with our lives as he flies this ship. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Yeah, Joker's a bit full of himself. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Disease? We didn't know anything about any disease. What are you talking about? Are you sick? You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome. Brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. I need to know more about this Vrolich syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. Okay, okay. I trust you enough. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. 
You're dodging the question. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, mm, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Well, I guess um, he had his reasons to be driven. How'd you end up joining the Alliance? Look, if you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. Fair enough. I have to go. Alright, see ya. That gave us some uh, nice information about Joker. Getting to know the crew. And talking of the crew, let's talk to Navigator Presley. Except there's a glitch, which means I cannot talk to Navig Navigator uh, Presley. We'll be able to talk to him, I think, after we uh, come back from uh, downstairs. For some reason, right now, I can't. Let's explore the rest of the ship. We've been here before. The mess hall. We spoke to Ashley here after the Eden Prime mission. And Caden is normally standing over here, doing God knows what. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. You can uh, talk to both Caden and Ashley about the last major story mission that you've done, which in this case is Eden Prime. Don't bother coming down to talk to them about any of the minor assignments. They won't have anything to say about them. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? He will have more to say later. I kind of think it was a bad decision um, for him to wait so long with uh, telling him about his personal life. Because if you don't take him on assignments, uh, which I normally don't do very often, He's kind of a, uh, a question mark. You don't really know anything about him. These are the captain's quarters, which means they're now mine. Not much to do here. In Mass Effect 2, the uh, captain's quarters have slightly more purpose, although still not much. Here, at the moment, all you can do is uh, get another codex entry, and that's it. We've been here before, but now we can examine the sleeper pod for another codex entry. I think after you do a couple missions, there will be new things to examine as well. My locker is still opened. It will close again. I don't need any new metagel. And we've already talked to Dr. Chakwas, and she won't have anything else to say. And this room is still empty. There is, however, another level to the Normandy that we haven't visited at all yet. For that, we need to take this elevator. Which, um, well, doesn't go very far. It's really only here because they need to load the lower area. And here we can find Ashley, Rex, and Garrus in the uh, cargo bay. 
as well as the Alliance Requisitions Officer. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. And that is why I've been buying licenses at the various shops on the Citadel. So, this guy has a larger variety of products on offer. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Not really in much detail, but anyway. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. But I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Uh, let's take a look at what he has to offer. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Like the requisitions officer at CSEC, he also sells the Spectre Master Gear. He and the CSEC requisitions officer are the only places in the game where you can buy those. Other than that, he has some standard uh, armors and weapons. It's basically just like any other shop. Um, I will not really buy stuff very often from him. Like I said, there's very little point in actually buying stuff most of the time. Except for these weapons, once we can afford them. But it is very useful to be able to sell some of your stuff once we uh, get too much of it. And this is something that I'll likely not be showing you very often when I do it. I'll probably just uh, edit that out because it's not interesting. Selling these really low uh, level items is really not all that useful because they're not worth a lot. So I tend to turn those into Omnigel, which is an even slower process than selling them, because you have to confirm it every time you do it. So again, something that I will likely be editing out. Down here we can also find the M35 Mako, an all-terrain vehicle that we will be using to explore planets later on. And we can look at it for some more Codex info. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. Those procedures are there to protect people. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to... I understand, Commander. Yes, we do need to remember who we're doing this for. We're not like Saren, sacrificing innocents 
to get the job done. On this side, um, we can talk to Ashley. We can also use the lockers to um, equip everyone. Which is useful when you want to equip people that you uh, didn't have on the last mission. Right now, if I go into inventory, I can only equip myself, because I don't have a squad. So if I want to equip anyone else, I need to use these lockers. Which just gives you the inventory screen for those people. Same as normal. Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Okay, we'll come back later then. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. Like I said, both Ashley and Caden will give you their opinion on the most recent mission. Over here, we find Rex. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Strange the definition of fun there. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Okay, I guess it's not the same. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. This really was one of the most insensitive things Commander Shepard does in uh, all the games so far. Patronizing the Krogan about their problems. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Um, aren't you doing th that too? What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one, and no one's rushing to find a cure. It seems that the Krogan actually have an unusually high birth rate because they, uh, their, their homeworld is an unusually harsh environment. So when they were taken out of that environment, their population just exploded. The Genophage seems to be an effort to keep their numbers under control, but I can understand why they wouldn't necessarily see it that way. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the Genophage or fight for credits? 
He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. Shepard. Poor guy. Hopefully he'll, uh... find what he needs someday. A cure, or whatever. Peace of mind. Down here is, um... engineering. There is our engine core. Which, again, we can examine for codex entries. This is a special Tantalus Drive core that enables our stealth systems to work. And it's also a very big and fast drive system. Very unusual for such a small ship to have one like that. I just leveled up from looking at something. Um, I want to have advanced overload which also gives me the ability to use electronic skill on average objects. You know that mini-game that we've been playing to uh, unlock certain crates? Some of the crates will have higher levels of difficulty, and not only does that make the mini-game more difficult, but it also means you need higher electronic skills to be able to even attempt to unlock them. Either you need to have that, or someone in your squad needs to have it. Same goes for decryption. Serves the same purpose. Uh, well, not entirely the same purpose. There, there are things for which you need decryption, and there are things for which you need um, electronics skill. But it's uh, it comes down to the same thing. They just separated it. Um, let's see. Spectre training. Nobody else to level up, since I don't have a squad right now. I'll have to do that next time we go on a mission. 